So I hope that you're not sitting on this call going, man, like, can I, can I do this? And, 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 you know, you know, is there a spot for me here? And can I win too? Of course you can win here, but it's your mindset. So I'm going to give you 10 things to write down. And some of these things are going to save your life in the business. And these are some things that I got really good at. Number one, you got to build it right. You got to build it right. Take my word for it. You do not have time to come back and build it a second time. You got to build it right in all areas of your business. And I'm going to talk about some of them today. But listen, build a business that lasts. I follow so many of you on social media or I see, you know, Dwan reposting. Man, some of you, got, you guys have kids, you have family members. Listen, fast is good, but far is better. Fast is good. You want to go fast. Trust me. You want to go as fast as you can. But if you had a gun to my head, fast versus far, I'm going far every time. But you can do both here. You can go fast and you can go far. But plan to be around in 25 years. Don't be one of these people that come in, right? They're just, they're just planning to max this thing out. They don't, they're not treating their people really well, right? Build it right the first time. So what are some things you need to do to build it right? Well, produce good trainers, Produce good trainers. Listen, you want to get free, right? That's, that's partly why you're here. If you want to get free, you have to build good trainers. You have to become duplicatable. Remember, the culture that you're building today in your SMD base shop is the culture that's going to be around long after you're gone. See, everybody quits in WFG. Everybody. You either quit building a base shop because you get so big long term like Tholly, Tholly quit building a base shop. He still mentors. He's still, he's still a leader to us all, but he quit building a base shop. You either quit building a base shop or you quit altogether. But everybody quits WFG. The question is, when that time comes for you, and no one's quitting WFG on this call, by the way. But when that time comes where maybe you get sick or your life shifts or you become the rich dolly of your hierarchy, when that time comes, what's left over is your culture. And your culture should be to produce strong trainers. Your culture should be, we work in the right market. Your culture should be, we are crusaders of the product. We put people first. And I'm preaching to the choir because I know this team does all those things, but I'm reminding you of some of the things that you're doing that are also, that are also working. Don't take shortcuts here, you guys. It's not, it, it's so tempting, right? And hold high standards. Hold high standards for your team. If you let a low standard creep in once, now that becomes, listen, the exception becomes the standard. Write that down. The exception becomes a standard. Oh, I'm going to make this exception this one time. You'll poison yourself. You'll poison yourself. Hold yourself to a high standard. We talk about 20, 30% licensing ratio. I think, our, I think everybody should be, get licensed. I think the goal should be 100%. Is that going to happen? No, I'm not that stupid. Not everyone's going to get licensed. But the standard should be 100%. Every license should get net licensed. Every net license should become a trainer. Every trainer should hit M SAMD. Every MD should become an SMD. And every SMD should start building SMDs. Once you start thinking in terms of, well, I guess two out of 10 get licensed, you're automatically trying to find the eight that are going to quit anyway. I treat everybody like they're going to be with me forever. I run my business like they're all going to quit tomorrow. I treat everybody like they're going to be with me forever. But I run my business like they're all going to quit tomorrow. <clears throat> my second point, you got to get into the distribution business. Don't get me wrong. You got to fall in love with what we do on the insurance side. You have to be a crusader of insurance, but you got to get out of the insurance business and you got to get into the distribution of insurance. You got to get obsessed with building volume. If you're on this call, and that's okay if, you, if you're this person, but if you're on this call right now and you still struggle with why we need to recruit or the power of recruiting, and I, and, and, and I know that even though you guys are running one of the best base shops in the company right now, there's still people on this call that struggle with personal recruiting. The first four years of my business, I was, a, I, was a, I was a producer and a recruiter. But now I'm a builder. Now I'm a builder. I'm a builder of people. Don't think 10 licenses, think 100. 
Think about building a training machine. Think about building outlets. How many outlets can you build that serve 10 families a month? How many outlets can you build in different communities? How many states can you be president? How many independent leaders in, in, in how many states can you get in in the next five years? You got to start thinking bigger, sister. You got to start thinking, brother. Start thinking like McDonald's franchise. You need more independent leaders so that when your time comes and God calls your number, that you're free. You don't want to be the one forever. This is not how good you can get. You, this is how good your people can get. How many people can you get to do what you do at the level that you do it at? I did this exercise with my leaders the other day. I said, I want you to write down on a piece of paper right now, how many people in your team can do what you do at the level that you do it at? I'm talking about the recruit, license, net license, train or develop leaders. How many people can do what you do? Do you have the Academy Award of presentations? Are you trying to be like the best presenter in the world? I, I see some of my, some guys and not just my team, but in general, I see their presentation and go, holy crap, that was unbelievable. I can never do that, but it was so spectacular. If there was an Academy Award of presenters, but they don't build anybody. What are we trying to do? We're trying to serve more families. We're trying to leave no family behind got to be simple. It's got to be duplicatable. The game is simple. Recruit license, net license, trainer, MD, SMD, repeat. But you got to get into the distribution business. Would you rather own a boutique steakhouse downtown San Diego or would you rather own the McDonald's franchising rights? You got to think independent. You got to be obsessed with outlets and, 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 and building volume outside of you. Who's your, who's your last license direct that you built independent? Not the three legs you've had for three years. Who's the last independent leader you recruited and licensed and trained? And if you can't think of it, if it's been a while, that's okay. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm here to remind you that you're here to do something big with your life too. And the way to do that is to build independent people. Does that make sense, you guys? <clears throat> All right, number three, you always push your leaders up. You always push your leaders up. I loved what Dwan said when he opened up. You have to be the one. You have to be the flight carrier. I talked to Olson this morning and I said, hey, tell me something about this couple. You want to know what he said? Number one flag carriers for Pinnacle in the hierarchy. Number one pinnacle flag carriers. See, if we're on this team right now, it's our responsibility to get them over a million. We should be taking it personally that our leader hasn't crossed a million yet. We have a responsibility to get them to SEVC. See, your team will fight for you like you fight for your leader. See, everybody wants to be the leader, but who's willing to be the follower first? Who's willing to be the best damn follower that they can be? You can't be a great leader if you're not a worthy follower first. And the best leaders are still worthy followers as they are also a great leader. So are you a flag carrier for this team? Are you the next half million? Who's the next? Who's the first half million dollar earner on this call? Who's the next 250 earner? I want to hear in the chat. Who's the next 250 earner? Who's the next $100,000 earner? Who's going to take this information that your leaders have been giving you and who's going to go to SMD? See, most people, they, they come to training after training after training. And by the way, don't quit. But a lot of people, they come, they come, they come, they come. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm hearing the same things over and over again. And, and it's just, it's, it, you know, it's repetitive. And it's, well, the training is for new people. We've already told you guys once. It's for your new recruit. So how many new recruits you got on? Oh, it's been four months or two months. Okay. So yeah, you're going to hear the same thing again. Maybe it's time to implement. Your job is to make your leader look unbelievable. Well, Steve, I, you know, I'm not really, I, I don't really, you're in a team business. You're in a team business. You will have people clap for you like you clap for others. How you show up for your leaders when you're in dark times is how your team's going to show up for you. 
I was always my leader's number one flag carrier, always the number one pusher of the promotion. So listen, whether you feel good or you feel down right now, sometimes it's easier to fight for the team goals than it is for your own. Be the flag carrier, step up. Like I already mentioned, you guys know how I feel about your leadership. Be the flag carrier, be the one, and then guess what's gonna happen? Guess what's gonna happen? I think it's, is that Chanel? Why Chanel? How do you pronounce that? Chanel. Okay, beautiful name. Close. Okay. Thank you. And guess what happens when she's, when she's ready to go on her CEO run and Joe Kramer's ready to go on his EVC run? Guess what's going to happen? Dewan's going to hop on that call and go, these guys were the biggest flag carriers for us. I want to know who's going to step up for them. And that is a story that everybody gets to build right now. If you miss that opportunity, you will, you will lose it forever. Everybody wants to help everybody else out when they feel like they're winning. That's not how it works. Your time will come and you should be winning and you should fight for your promotion. And it does matter. But you got to make it about them for now. And then one day it'll be all about you. And by the way, once you get to where they're at, all they talk about is their team. All they think about is their team. Here's the crazy part. The bigger you get, the more it's about you and the less you want it to be about you. You, you could technically get huge here. Never, never want to get anything else mentioned about you, but there's nothing you can do. It will become all about you if you make it all about them. Number four. <clears throat> this one would have saved me five years in my business. Number four, you got to learn to lead all types of people. See, early on in my career, you guys, my entire team looked the same. They were all young, alpha males, single. I had to learn how to adapt and lead different people. Man, there was no single young, good-looking girl safe on my team when I started. The alphas were out. Oh! Not good for business. I had to make a rule. Don't Dip your pen in company ink. I was like, you guys, you got to get, you got to keep it out of the base shop, right? This is getting crazy. Guess what? You have to learn to speak to different people. My team was young, alpha, white, right-wing conservative. We had no women, no diversity, right? I mean, it was crazy. I mean, if we were in the US, we probably all would have been from a small town in Texas. That's like literally the, 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 the amount, the depth of, of understanding we had of the world. And I love Texas, by the way, but just, you know. I needed to change my language. I needed to learn the human needs. I needed to learn that not everybody was like me. I was, see, there's six human needs and I don't have time to go through them. You can Google them, right? There's the need for certainty, which is the need for stability. There's the need for variety, which is like, you know, every day has got to be different. The cowboy, the commission. Three is the need for love it or significance, competing. You know, someone's significant driven when they show up on a Zoom call and all their trophies are behind them. The fourth is love and connection. Love and connection people want to be connected with. Here's the crazy thing I learned about people that are significant driven. A lot of people early on in their life were significant driven because they were trying to get the attention of their parents. So they were competing at a high level, but all they really wanted was a hug. A lot of significance people just want to be loved. Number five is growth and number six is contribution. Now I've got guys on my team that want to save the baby whales. I swear to God, all the whales in the world are going to get saved if some of my guys win. All of them. I don't have to worry about the whales. They're covered over here. So what I realized is that not everybody was like me. But you know what brought me together? You know what? You know, you know, how, you know how me as a time, the young white male, you know how I could relate to an old black single dad? You know how I could relate to that man? By being vulnerable with my story. Because we're all connected like that. We all have pain. We all been through something. And everybody in this call has been through some shit in their life, you guys. And that's what makes you unique and special. And don't hide from that. But listen, you got to be a leader of all people. <clears throat> you can't be decisive. You do not want an entire team 
of right-wing or left-wing radicalists. You don't want to get on your soapbox and blow half your team out this way, half your team out that way. I see so many leaders. They go five, 10 years, they build a huge team and write this down, loose lips sink ships. Loose lips sink ships. In one sentence, in one conversation, you can destroy a relationship that you had been building for five years. I don't really care what your vaccination stance is. I don't. I don't care. I don't care if you vote right or left. I don't care if you're a gay man or a straight woman. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't change anything. If we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation about life and we're talking about things one-on-one, -on -one, of course I'm interested to see how you feel about this and that. That's a one-off. But as a leader, it doesn't matter to me. I want to be a leader of all people. I want everybody to feel welcome. I want to know that no matter where they come from or what their beliefs are or what their goals are in their life, that they have a place here with Holbrook. That we are a platform and a team that welcomes everybody, big or small. And that has been one of the strengths that I've been able to develop the last 10 years. <clears throat> Number five. You got to go all out on your social media presence. All out. This is a new era. This is a new era. Think where we'll be in five years. Listen, this is how I talk about this. If you didn't get big 10 years ago, if you're not over, if you didn't make over a million a year 10 years ago, if you're not making over 10 mil today already, chances are you're going to have to really leverage social media like the world is to catch up to those people. Do you want to know what I did when I first started? You want to know what I was doing? Because my let told me to do it because I'm so damn coachable. He's like, Holbrook, go buy 10 fish bowls. I want you to go around all the dry cleaners and I want you to ask them if you can draw a free lunch for one of their patrons as long as they put the business cards in there. So I went out all the dry cleaners and they put all these business cards in there for a free lunch and I buy like a free Subway sandwich. And I call the business cards. Hey, Doug, it's Steve Holbrook calling. I see you work at Caltire. Our firm's had a lot of success bringing on guys like you in the past. I'm not sure if you'd be a fit for me or, or we'd be a fit for you, but I'd like you to come down during business hours and we can chat. And I'd have the script down pat. I'd call, I'd call 100 people. I'd get 15, 20 down to the office. I'd recruit one or two and I'd do it every single week. I'd be calling business cards, 20, 30, 40 a day, nonstop, 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 nonstop. I'd be calling bus stops. I'd go through the directory of licensed agents. I'd, I'd do whatever I had to do to build my, build my market back in the day. And now there's a billion people on social media. And there's still people that don't have an Instagram profile picture. I just think you're missing it, guys. I just really, really think you're missing it. See, let me, let me give you seven reasons why you have to be on social media today. And you got to train this on your team. Number one is it's the new website. Nobody cares who you are anymore until they know who you are. Sorry, nobody cares. Nobody cares what you do until they know who you are. Nobody cares what you do until they know who you are. 10 years ago, you'd send someone to your company website. And what does your website do? It's like you like this, like, mm, Steve Holbrook Financial. Here's all the things that I do. I'm so smart and all the letters. People look at that, they go, I don't, doesn't mean anything. Who is this guy? Who is she? Oh, she's got a couple kids. Holy smoke, she's got a good mindset. Wow, he's consistent. You know what? I like his vibe. He's putting out some good stuff. Doesn't have to be fancy. Doesn't have to be professional. Like, like I mean, like over the top, spend a ton of money on it. But your social media presence is a window into who you are. If you don't think everybody that you sit down with is looking you up online before they meet with you, you are missing the message. Everybody is. Everybody's looking you up. So at least have some things put together. At least post some stuff of who you are as a person, right? Number two is your 24 seven marketing machine. Every day you get to wake up, you have to be the lighthouse or the tugboat. The tugboat wakes up every morning, fills his little tank full of gas, drives out to the, to the ocean, faces all the big waves, finds broken down boats and tugs them back to the shore. 
Now, every day we have to be the tugboat. We got to go and prospect, right? As we go, we're out and about and we're bringing people to the office. That's the tugboat. And we got to be the tugboat. But if you got a social media presence, you wake up every morning, you're the lighthouse. What do you do? You just shine bright. What does the lighthouse do? It tracks all the boats to the shore. You want to be a tugboat or you want to be the lighthouse? There's certain things we have to do every day to, to be the tugboat and prospect, but I'm telling you right now, if you build a presence, you will become the lighthouse in people's lives. Be a beacon of hope. It's so easy right now. Think about how easy this is. The world is so messed up. There's so much negativity. The news is a disaster. People are so damn confused. Inflation, the economy, politics, everybody is just inundated with all this negative crap. The war this, the war that. What if you were the beacon of hope? What if you were just the quick positive message? Not over the top, not machismo. What if you were the positive influence? Like I love getting on there and seeing Tuan's uh, uh, videos. What if you just had a message for the day? What if people just saw your face and you were smiling? What if they, what if they just followed you because you were a woman on a journey towards something better? You weren't necessarily pounding things down people's throat. You weren't peddling insurance just right off, right off your stories. But what if you were just a beacon of hope, a beacon of positivity? The third reason, it's your virtual butts and seats. 10 years ago, we'd say, how many butts and seats? How many people do you have down to the office at your meeting? I got 40, I got 50, I got 30. You know what happened 10 years ago when people quit? You'd never see him again. 10 years ago, Skippy doesn't show up to the meeting, he's gone. Witness protection program, you drive by his house, his lights are off, you see him on the side of a milk carton. Like we're talking witness protection program 10 years ago. Now, guess what Skippy's doing every Wednesday night? while you're running your uh, BPM. Skippy's on your stories. Watching the show. He might've stopped coming to meetings six months ago, but guess what? He's sitting on his couch eating a bag of Cheetos, watching the show on stories. How many of you have had a person reach out to you on social media who might've quit and wants to come back? See guys, butts and seats is now virtual. It's not just how many people you have come to the meeting. It's how many people, how many people you have who were at the meeting who have stepped back but are still hanging on, listening to your message every single day. See, you have a bigger, bigger ripple effect and a bigger message than you think. The fourth reason you got to be on social media is because it helps with retention. Teams that have social media presence keep their teammates longer. You want to know why? Because I know that as Dewan and Caitlin get bigger in their team, they're going to have less time to communicate with everybody on their team. You want to know what the crazy thing is? When I show up to a Las Vegas convention, I meet people on my team that I never met before. And guess what they say to me? Man, I'm so grateful for your daily mentorship. 10 years ago, my daily mentorship would have been me calling them, talking to them for 20 minutes on the phone. You know what my daily mentorship is now? They're plugging into all my stuff. They're plugging into all my leader stuff. They get mentorship daily and their season might not be right now. They might be a year away from their season, but we're retaining way more people. Sixth reason, it's your communication hub. I communicate with 50% of my team through social media rather than phone, text, WhatsApp. I'm talking about the, the extended team. I'm commenting on people's stories on my team. I'm reposting their, you know what recognition is? When I repost someone's stories. I'm DMing them. Hey, great job at the meeting last night. I'm using DM on Instagram to recognize my teammates, to communicate with them, to send out group messages. I'm sending out group text through uh, Instagram DM. Hey, the three of you, great job last night. You guys should plan something together. Commenting on people's posts, liking their stuff, resharing their stories. I am communicating with my team through social media and it takes a second and I don't have to pick up the phone and I don't have to send a text message. It's unbelievable. Voice notes, game changer. When you, when you DM somebody or you, you know what's crazy? You want to know something is super crazy? When you comment on someone on your team's story, even if you don't comment about that story, so here's what I'll do. I'll go on Grady's social media. I'll go through his stories and on one of his stories, I'll push comment and I'll say, hey brother, great to see the meeting last night, man. You're such a champ. So he's going, not only is this guy, not only is this guy supporting me on my social media, which none of my friends and family are. He's the only guy that liked this story. Not only is the only guy that liked this story, he left me a message through my story and it made me feel really good about myself.
We're talking about building a team, right? We're talking about making people feel good. <clears throat> Number six, it helps you personally recruit. That was my sixth reason. Helps you get directs. And number seven, helps you build a personal brand. I'm not WFG. I'm Steve Holbrook. And WFG is a part of what I do. I'm also a father. I'm a brother. I'm a man of God. I'm Steve Holbrook. So, I know there's two reasons why you guys don't post. Because you don't know what to say and you don't like yourself on video. Listen. Stop overthinking it. Spread some love. Nobody likes themselves on video. Spread some love. This isn't about you. Start now. And the final thing on social media is this. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. While you're overthinking the perfect post, people that are way smaller than you and way worse than you on camera are just dunking on you right now. The best speakers in the company right now are the ones that are on social media. They became the best speakers. They're becoming the best speakers because they're getting on social media. They're learning how to use their hands, learning how to engage. You go to convention, watch next year. The best speakers in WFG are the ones that are consistently posting on social media. You want to be a good speaker? You want to move your team? And Ed, Ed always said this. He said, WFG is a level playing field except for one thing. Unless you can deliver a message from stage. He says, if you can deliver a message from stage or now on Zoom and you're a good speaker, you'll dunk on everybody. So not only do you get to build your team and help with retention and person recruit, you get to learn your speaking skills and it gives you an unfair advantage to move your team at a level that maybe they weren't going to be moved had you not developed some of that, what it takes from stage. Now, I'm not saying you have to be the best speaker in the world to win here. No, I just told you, level playing field. But the better you get at articulating your message, the more confident that you're going to get, and the stronger leader you'll come across as from stage. All right, about social media. My sixth point, okay? So I'm going to review just quick. Build it right. Get in the distribution business. Always push up your leader. Learn to lead all types of people. Go all out on social media. Number six, you build warriors through communication. You build warriors through, the, through communication. When you communicate with people, you will build somebody who will go to war for you. The reason that Eric and Dwan have such a great relationship is because they're commuting, communicating all the time. You need your coach to go to war for you and you need to go to war for your coach. And the only way that's going to happen is if you're communicating. Communicating builds trust. Communicating builds certainty. Communicating builds consistency. And if you don't have like trust and consistency and all those things that you need with your leader or your downline, when something goes wrong, they're gone. You need to build some warriors. You need to build some people that no matter what happens, they are with you. Thick or thin, they know. And as my mentor always said, the mindset is transferred through communication. The only way that your mindset is going to get transferred to these people and you build these warriors, the only way that you're going to teach people how to be independent and really build distribution, people are like, how do I build somebody really quick? You ready? You communicate a crazy amount with them. See, listen, any, anybody can go recruit a couple hundred people their first year. The recruiting part is, is not what holds people back. It's a developing into the leader. It's how do they, how do they develop that leadership mindset? They got to learn how to lead people. They got to learn how to, how to work through a chargeback when their best teammate quits, when it feels like the whole team's falling apart. How are, how are they thinking about that? When their relationship is on the rocks and you as a leader, you're not their therapist, but you're, you're guiding them and teaching them. And the more that you're communicating with them on things, the more you're transferring the mindset, the more you're transferring the mindset. So you build warriors through communication. You need warriors on your team and it's built through communication. Ed said, do you want the three hour version or the five second version on, on how to build leaders in your base? I said, give me the five second version. He says, all right, you ready? Try and be in every one of your new recruits wedding party. Try and be in every one of your teammates wedding party. And you may not get picked to be in their wedding party, but you know you're on the short list. You know that you're in the front row. And I've been, I, I've, I've officiated 
more weddings than I can remember already. I've been in more wedding parties. Ed, Ed's like, dude, I've been in like 25 best mans at wedding parties in my hierarchy. All my best guys. That's how you know. That's how you know. Number seven, my seventh point. You got to sell the business where we win. You, this one is, you got to hear me on this one. You have to sell our business where we win. You got to master our model. See, there's always going to be copycats. There's always going to be candy companies. There's always going to be people that get on social media and pretend like they sold their company for three, $400 million when we all know they didn't. When we all know the real number. Because none of their guys got paid. So we know the number. We all know there's going to be candy companies. But listen to me. You need to know where we win. You got to go to the battlefield armed up. And let me tell you where we win. And I call these candy companies because they're all sweet on the outside, but they'll rot you from the inside out. I'll tell you where we win. We win building frontline leaders. WFG has the best model in the industry, building frontline leaders, recruiting somebody direct to you, building them up, promoting them frontline to you and teaching them how to go and make a hundred, two, three, four hundred thousand. Direct mentorship, direct leaders, direct frontline SMDs. When you take our first generation override plus the 4% bonus, we override our frontline at 16%. There's not another company in this industry that has a better frontline override in the, in, in the industry. I get these candy companies once in a while. They call my guys. They're like, hey, let's get on a call. Every once in a while, I like to hop on these calls just as a surprise. Nobody's calling me. I'm like, I'm offended. Nobody's calling me to join their deal. What about lollipops for Steve? Where's the, where's the dude with the white van outside the preschool for Steve Holbrook, right? They're not around. So I get on these calls and I'm like, and, and I'm like, oh, hold on. So tell me about your model. Well, let me tell you about our model. You're at 66%. We're going to give you 76. Oh, 76. Wow. Oh my God. Tell me more. And we're not going to bring your guys in as associates. We're going to bring them in as MDs. Ooh, MDs. Oh, damn, man. You got me. Where do I sign? I'm so excited. I can barely hold it in. Uh, what's your first generation override? Oh, you know, like like eight or nine or seven. Somebody the other day was like six, and I'm okay, yeah, cool. This is this is sounds super exciting. So hold on, it's like, hold on. I said, wait a minute. You're gonna give me ten percent more comp on one license, which is mine, and you're gonna make me give up eight percent comp on infinite amount. I said, hold on. I got two. I got I got almost three hundred frontline SMDs. 8% on 300 is like a big number, bro. And you're trying to sell me short for 10%? I'm like, man, you're thinking so small. I said, here's the problem with me, Skippy. I said, if I was king for a day, I'd lower the SMD contract to 50% and I'd put that all to super base override. I don't need, I don't need 66% of my personal pen. I said, give me 50. I said, I would have started if it was 40. If you're like, hey, highest contract's 40%, first gen override is 35. I'd be like, oh, let's get, just build some leaders, bro. Let's build some leaders. So you got to know where we win. You got to know what to, where to spend time with and how to get fired up. And don't get lured away. Don't let your team get lured away by some deal with no leadership, no longevity, no proven system. You know what the crazy thing about these candy companies are, Juan? I'm like, where's all the big money earners? There's not any big money earners. I'm like, show me somebody. There's this company in Canada that's, that's trying to steal some guys. They've been doing it for 10 years, right? Doesn't matter who they are. Oh man, I'm not even gonna get into it. I'm gonna, I just about said their name. Doesn't matter who they are. It's a joke. They have nobody making a million bucks a year. Nobody, not one person. I'm like, if the opportunity's so good, where's all the big money earners? Well, we focus more like on like the middle part. So like, instead of making 90, you can make like 110. I'm like, sell me the dream. Where are we going? My God, nobody does it better. Nobody does it better, right? So listen, we have the best environment. We have the best training. We have the best backing, but we also have the best comp model for what we're all trying to accomplish. And you need to know that. Number eight, I'm running out of time. Number eight, you got to take 100% responsibility for your business and your life. Everything that's happening wrong in your business, that falls on leadership and everything right that's going on, that falls on your team. It's nobody's fault. You can't point fingers. We all have shit holding us back. Pardon my language. We all have stuff holding us back. 
We all got stuff holding us back. Yeah, Damien just dropped the name on the chat like a, like a pro. Maybe that was a private message. We all got things holding us back. What makes you think that your stuff is more important than everybody else's? What makes you think that what you're going through is bigger than what anybody else is going through? And you're going to have some seasons where yeah, maybe mom's got cancer and that's serious. Your kids are sick during the hospital. I'm not talking about making light of that situation. But it's up to you. It's your responsibility to fill your bank account. It's your responsibility to make money every month. It's your responsibility to keep this thing on the rails. Stuff's going to happen. Kids are going to get sick. Relationships going to go up and down. But it's on you. Isn't that why you joined? Didn't you want the ball in the 10-yard line, Brady? Didn't you ask for the ball? Didn't you want the control? Didn't you want to be in control of your life? That's what I wanted. And now you got it. And now you got it. You're here on this team. You got the ball. Don't drop it. We don't need more passengers. We need drivers. The back of the bus is full. We want drivers. We want people driving the bus. And everybody on this call has the opportunity to drive their own bus. But you're the energy bunny for your team. You be the competitor. You win the contest. You show up early. And even when everything's falling apart and nothing's working, you be the one. And my last point is this. Oh no, number nine. Sorry, number nine point. You got to understand the window that we're in. Sorry, I'm five minutes over, Dwan. <clears throat> you got to... My ninth point, you got to understand the window that we're in. <clears throat> we're in a super cycle right now. You're in a condenser cycle. You can do right now in the next three years what took me 15, 10 to 15 to do. I don't know if it's ever going to get this good again. But I'll tell you one thing I know about windows. They always close. They always close. And I don't know if it's your business window, your health window. I don't know where you're at in your business, in your life right now, but I'll tell you that you're in a window. See, everybody's waiting for things to get better. Everybody's waiting for, 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 just, for just the opportunity to get better. Meanwhile, people are struggling in mortgages. Real estate's uncertain. It's the best recruiting time we've seen in 20 years. You got the best index product. As the markets are collapsing, the index product is where everybody wants to be. But this business, just like you in your life, you operate in cycles. And if you're able-bodied enough to be on this call right now, I'm going to tell you right now that you're in a window. And if you're waiting for the diagnosis or you're waiting for your family member to get sick, or you're waiting for all that crap to come, you're going to wish you got it going now. And my last point is this. Number 10, you got to get clear on what this is for you. What is this really for you? Is this a personal development journey? Is this something that you can do to get out of the house, away from the family for a few years? Or is this it for you? Is this your championship? And how sold, out, how sold out are you? Are you sold out like this is your ticket? Like this is your sport? If you were accused in the court of law of being all in, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Back engineer this thing, you guys. Figure out where you need to be in five years. Figure out what that looks like by year's end and go all in on September. I'm gonna close on this, you guys. If everybody in this call was given 12 months to live, but the only cure was to add 100 licenses, you could all do it. Some of you got to close your eyes tonight and you start, need to start to imagine what it, what it would feel like to be making big money and saving big money and having no financial stress and making an unreal impact for people and being the leader of that team and having the money to support your kids and having the time to do what you need to do 
because the storm is coming for all of us on this call. The question I have is how big is your boat going to be? And when that time comes, what would you be willing to, to, what would you be willing to give up to come back 12 months and wish you did it different? You'd be willing to give up everything. So I'm not saying give up your family. I'm not saying give up your health, but I'm saying there's some, there's some big decisions that need to get made on this call to get to the next level. But I want to know that I believe in you, right? I know you can do it. I didn't have time to talk about the, you know, the, 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 the rings and the cash from the homes. You guys do great, you great job on that. But I'm here to tell you that, you know, when your family needs you and when your son gets sick with Crohn's like mine did and, he, and he's battling f for his day to day, you're going you're gonna to get to be wherever you need to be. So it's so worth it. You got to go all in for it. You guys are on the right team, right time. I love you guys. God is good. He puts challenges in front of you that he knows you can get over. So appreciate you guys being here today. Duan, thanks for the, thanks for the invitation. Thank you.